There are many different design tools out there in the market that we can use in order to design our user interface and do prototyping and sometimes even go further and create our final product without having to do any coding. I believe that having a good and basic knowledge about all these tools in the market would be very beneficial for your career. I personally find Figma a very good and powerful tool and that's why the Figma is the main design tool in my toolkit. However, over the last couple of weeks, I started to use a Framer and Webflow in order to create more realistic prototypes and sometimes I kind of directly go for the final product. I'm going to make a series of videos in which I'm going to choose one user interface element and try to use all these three software that I mentioned before in order to create this user interface element. For example, in this video, I'm going to start with a very simple user interface element, which is going to be the button. I'm going to design button in the Figma and then in the Framer and then in the Webflow. But before we go further with this video, if you're new here and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to do it right now and like this video and check out the other videos as well. My name is Kia and here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. So let's see how we can create a button inside the Figma. There are many different ways to do so, but here I'm going to show you how to create a button uh, which is going to have a dynamic sizing regarding the text land inside it. So I'm going to pick the text tool and write down my placeholder text. Then I'm going to work on the styling of this text. I'm going to choose enter as a font family and 20 pixel for the size of the text. Then I'm going to use the combination key shift A to apply auto layout on this layer. After that, I'm going to set the top and bottom margin to 12 pixel and then left and right margin to 24 pixel. Now it's time to add a fill color or the background color to this frame. I'm going to choose this purple color in this case. And then I'm going to increase the corner radius to 12 pixel. Now my button is ready. So I'm going to convert this frame to the component and then in order to create the hover state or hover effect, I'm going to add a rectangle inside this frame. The next step, I'm going to set the positioning of this rectangle to the absolute positioning. And then I'm going to resize the height of this rectangle to something that fill whole button. I'm going to change the background color of this rectangle to the dark blue and then position it outside the button. Then I'm going to select the whole button frame and then turn on this option clip content, which is going to hide all the content outside the main frame. Now my button is ready. So I'm going to create the second variant for the hover state. For the hover state, I'm going to select the rectangle that we made and we'll position it outside the frame and then align it to the center of the frame. So as you can see, the second variant has a little bit darker background. Now it's time to work on the prototyping. So I'm going to select the first variant and then go to the prototyping panel and create my first interaction. I set the trigger type on the while hovering and then interaction type to change to. And here I'm selecting the hover as the state that it needs to change to. I set the animation type to smart animation and then set the duration of the animation to 300 milliseconds. Now I would like to check the preview. So I'm going to make a new frame and then go to the asset panel and drag and drop one instance of the button component that we made. Now I'm going to run the preview and as you can see when I'm hovering the button I would have the effect that I would like to have. Framer is a very similar tool to Figma in many aspects. Let's take a look at the user interface. As you can see, there are many similarities between the Framer user interface and Figma. Also, we can see there are many similarities between the way that we can use tools inside the Framer with the Figma. Now let's see how we can make a button inside the Framer. So as we have done inside the Figma, I'm going to pick up the text tool and write down the placeholder text. I'm going to play a little bit with the styling of the text to recreate the same exact styling that we have done inside the Figma. Then then I'm going to select the text layer and right click on it and click on the add frame. Here I created a frame and add the text layer into that frame. Now I'm going to select the frame and then from sizing properties panel, I'm going to set the width and height sizing behavior of this frame to fit the content. This means the size of this frame is going to change based on the length of the text that we have inside it. We have done the similar logic inside the Figma. Now it's time to add a padding to the frame. So I'm going to set the same padding for the top and bottom and left and right that we have done inside the Figma to recreate the same exact look and feel of the button. Now I'm going to change the background color of the uh, frame to the blue. And then last, I'm going to add the corner radius to the button. Now it's time to add the overlay that we would like to have when the user hover on the button. I'm going to use the same logic that we had in the Figma. So I'm going to create a rectangle, add it to this frame, and then change the background color to something a little bit darker. In Framer, we do not have possibilities to create shapes using the shape tool. Instead of that, we can create frames. Here, when I click on the layout, I can create a new frame, or I can use the short key F. Then I position that rectangle 
outside the frame again. Just do not forget that we need to take the order of the layer into consideration. The text layer should be above that frame. If not, the rectangle that we made is going to cover the text. Now I'm going to select the frame that we have and right click on it and click here on create component. Also, we can do the same thing using the combination key Control Alt K or Command Alt K in Mac. Here in this step, we're going to select the name for our component. And after we create the component, we will be redirected directly to the component editor that you can see here. Here, I'm going to click on the creating a new hover state or press state. And here in the hover state, I'm going to select the rectangle that we made and then move it to the center of the bottom. Now, from the asset panel, we can have access to the components that we made in this file. So here, for example, I can see this button in the list. So I'm going to drag and drop or just click on it and create instance for a button component. And now I'm going to run the prototype. And as you can see, when I'm hovering this button, I can see the same effect. Okay, now it's time to see how we can create our button inside the Webflow. But before we go further with this process, I would like to mention one point. So Webflow is not exactly the same as Framer and Figma. Here, in order to be able to create a correct structure for our web page, and in order to be able to kind of styling our element in a correct way, it's better that we be a little bit familiar with the HTML tags and elements, and then CSS styling and classes. These concepts will help us to be a little bit comfortable inside the Webflow. So in order to position the button that we are going to create in the center of the screen, first we need to create the structure of our page. So in the first step, I'm going to click on this plus button and add my first HTML element, which is going to be a section. Then from sizing properties panel, I'm going to set the width of the section to 100% of the view port width or VW. No matter how wide our screens is going to be, this section is going to kind of cover a whole screen. I'm going to do the same thing for the height. So I'm going to set the height of this frame or the section to 100% of the viewport height or V edge. The next element that I'm going to add is going to be the container. So I'm going to click on the plus button and add one container inside this section element. Container is basically a frame which has a max width, it means it's not going to get bigger than a specific uh, kind of a size that we set for it. Here for this container, I'm going to set the height of the container to 100% this time. The height of this container is going to kind of follow the height of the section. And then here from the setting related to layout, I'm going to change the display uh, setting to stack. Here for the align, and justify properties, I'm going to set both to the center. Now I'm going to create my first div or the frame that I'm going to have my button inside it. I'm going to click on the plus button and create one div. And as you can see, the div that we made is going to position in the center of the screen. So let's take a look at here. In the style panel, we have this style selector. This is the way that we can assign a specific style to specific HTML elements. So if you are familiar with the CSS, these are basically the CSS classes. So I can add a specific class to a specific element by selecting that element. In this case, for example, I select the div block and here in the style selector, I'm going to create my very first class. I'm going to name this class button or BTN outer wrapper. Then I'm going to add one another div inside that div. And this time I name it button or BTN inner wrapper. So basically I made two classes already. Now inside the inner wrapper, I'm going to add one text element and I'm going to rename or create a class for this text and I'm going to name it button or BTN dash text. For the BTN dash text class, I'm going to add top and button padding 12 pixel and left and right padding 24 pixel. And then we're gonna work a little bit on the styling of the text and the color of it to recreate the same exact styling that we had in the Figma and Framer. And then I'm gonna select the BTN outer wrapper and then add a background color to it. Also, I'm going to increase the corner radius the 12 pixel here as well. Inside the BTN inner wrapper, I'm going to create a new div. Before doing anything, I'm going to select the BTN inner wrapper again and change the layout styling to this tag. I'm going to add a class to the div that we made inside the inner wrapper. I'm going to rename it button overlay. If you remember in the Figma framework, we set the positioning of this overlay element to the absolute positioning. Here, I'm going to do the same trick. I want to do the same thing. But if I directly set the position of this overlay to the 
absolute, then the position of this element is going to be relevant to the whole body section. So if I want to change position and sizing of this element is going to be relevant to whole screen or the whole body tag in the HTML structure. But I want to have a connection between this overlay and the button that I have. If we want to have one element within another element, which the child element has an absolute positioning, and we want that child element has a connection with the parent element, we need to set the positioning of the parent element to relevant. In that way, we will make this connection between the child element and the parent element. So here, I'm going to select the BTN inner wrapper and then set its positioning to relevant. Now, as you can see, the BTN overlay element is exactly positioned in the corner of the button. Now, I'm going to set the BTN overlay width and height to 100%. And now it's time to change the background color to something a little bit darker. But as you can see, this BTN overlay is going to cover the text. I'm going to select the BTN overlay. And here from the position pr properties panel, I'm going to set the Z index to a minus one to just push it back and position it before the text layer. Okay, it's time to kind of create our hover effect or hover animation for this button. So I'm going to select the BTN outer wrapper element and here I open the interaction panel. In the interaction panel, I'm going to click on this plus button next to the element trigger to create my very first trigger. And from this drop down menu, which is going to be open, I'm going to select the mouse hover as a trigger of my interaction. Okay, here I need to create the action that would happen after user hover on this element. So I will open the drop down menu next to the action and I set it on the start an animation. Here, I need to create the hover animation. I'm going to click at this plus button next to the timed animation. Here, I'm gonna name the first animation that I'm going to make to BTN hover animation. Now, in order to add a specific animation or transition to any element inside this button, first I need to select it. So I'm going to select the overlay of frame. I'm going to click on the plus button next to the action and then choose the size for the properties that I'm going to manipulate or add animation to it. As you can see in this animation panel, we have a timeline with, which is going to indicate what is the initial state and in which time what will happen to this property. So for example, for the size of the button overlay frame at the beginning, I'm going to choose 0% for the width and 100% for the height. And then again, I'm going to click on this plus button next to the action and then select the size again for the properties that I would like to animate it. But for this new one that we made, I'm going to change the width to 100%. As you can see, the duration of animation is 0%. 0.5 second that later on I will change it to maybe 0.2 to make it a little bit faster. Okay, now let's get one step back here. As you can see, we have one option here to say what will happen if the user stop hovering that element. Here in this section, we need to create one animation, which is going to be exact the opposite of the animation that we made in the previous step. So here I'm going to click and plus button to create a new animation. Again, I'm going to select the BTN overlay. Now I'm gonna add a size as a properties that I'm going to animate. And then for the initial state, I'm going to set the width and height both in 100%. And then I'm going to add again another keyframe for the size properties. And this time set the height still on the 100% and the width on zero. So here we are done with the button and if we run the preview, you can see that the button animation is working pretty well and is exactly the same that we have done inside the Framer and Figma. I hope you enjoyed this video and if it was so, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and get sure to write down in the comment section that which component you want to see in the next video that I'm creating in these three softwares. I'm going to choose the next component that I'm going to work on it from the comment section. So don't forget to do that. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.